in the moments when I try to take control over things that I cannot control, I immediately disconnect from miracles. I disconnect from trusting that there is a bigger plan that I cannot see. And that's really helped me in those moments when it's hard. I want to dive into these three things that when I look back at my own journey, when I look at the women I get to mentor in growing their businesses or stepping into their next expansion, the three biggest blocks to that expansion. And in the last episode, when I was talking a little bit about the internal expansion work that I have done and have been doing, there's a couple of places where it just points like right directly to my biggest room for expansion. And some of these cross over into these places where when I have gotten really still, when I've sat with myself and noticed like where I get really triggered, where things really anger me or just trigger intense emotion, it's usually tied to one of these core themes that I think for a lot of us can stand in the way of our next expansion. And I have three, there's really two main main areas and the third one is like a subset of, of number two. But I wanna dive into these because like I said, I mean, I talk to so many women on a weekly basis. Right now I'm in the middle of our six figure school cohort. So we're doing live calls. I'm getting ready to host our expanders retreat. I'm gonna be in a room with 30 of the most ambitious driven women on the planet, like my type of people. And for so many of us, these themes show up and it's kind of sneaky. I was just talking to my beautiful friend and podcast manager, Brianne, about how sometimes like these themes show up and they just put on a different outfit. You think that, oh, I'm so over that. I don't have that issue anymore, but it's the same core wound or trigger. It just puts on a different outfit and comes back and tries to pretend it's a different issue. And it's not, it's the same route that maybe you've been dealing with for your entire life. And there's a, a few big themes for me that I just feel like will probably always be areas I need to be mindful. I just need to always be checking in to make sure that I'm not being held back by these blocks because I am on a, a journey of expansion. I do want bigger things. I have a big desire to create amazing things and abundance and a big impact. And if I'm not careful, I think as you evolve the, you know, the disguises of these different patterns that hold us back can become more sneaky. We don't see it as readily because no one else would look at us from the outside and say, oh, you're totally holding yourself back. Most people would look at my life or maybe yours from the outside and say, wow, you're doing amazing things. You don't look like you're getting in your own way at all. But when I pause and I check in and I look at my thoughts on a daily basis and and just where I get taken out of my power. That's really what it comes down to. These are usually the areas that I am most susceptible to finding my own blocks to my next expansion. And the first one I know I'm not alone in, it's the need for control. I've had this I've just had some very deep thoughts about my need for control lately, especially being in a season where there's a lot of change, there's a lot of uncertainty and whether that's happening in, directly in your life or you're just feeling, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty on just on a global level at this point. And, you know, certainty is it's really just an illusion. I don't think we ever have complete certainty of the way things will turn out, but we can create internal certainty for ourselves. And often what I realize is when I'm in a season of a lot of change, my mind in order to feel safe is just looking for certainty anywhere it can find it. And I think learning to have compassion for these patterns where they show up. So instead of in the past, how I might've related to finding these blocks showing up again in my, in my way, 
I might have kind of gotten down on myself like oh, once again, I'm you know trying to control the outcomes and I'm thinking too small and it's limiting me. But now, thanks to also my therapist for helping me really see that also when I look at the things that I would categorize as blocking me, there are also things that have really worked for me. They've really made a lot of things go well. They've worked for that part of my brain that really wants to feel safe and wants to create some sense of certainty in a very uncertain world. And whether I developed it in childhood, as a kid, just wanting to to really feel some control over my environment or my emotions, it doesn't really matter where it roots from. It just it's often helpful for me to realize that that part of my mind that really, really loves to control outcomes, maybe you have it too, is the same part that believes it's keeping me safe right now. So here's some of the things that I've really been learning about control in this season. And I think for anyone who's really calling in massive expansion, what we have to realize is massive expansion is going to require massive change. And change is the biggest thing that starts to trigger that sense of uncertainty. The other thing is to realize that, you know, our ego, like that part of us that, again, wants safety, wants to be in control, is going to convince us that you can't give up control. If you just let, like, let things be, nothing will get done. It definitely won't get done to your liking and everything's going to fall apart. I don't know about you, but like my, (laughs) that ego voice of control for me is very gloom and doom, like very much believes that if I am not involved in every single aspect of my life, of people I love, their life as well, that it's just all going to fall apart. And that's just not true first and foremost, but it's a part of us again that really was created in a time where we were seeking safety. So when I notice my mind wanting to overly control details, wanting to just take too much responsibility even for someone else's work and for their transformation and feeling like I need to be a part of it, I need to help them. What I come back to is, you know, just really this this analogy of what's like right within the radius of what I actually can control. And it's only things that are directly tied to my actions or my thoughts. And then what are the things that are just not mine? And drawing a clear distinction between those first and foremost. Now, I may not like it. Sometimes my world is very impacted by things that other people are doing or aren't doing. And It's been interesting in this season to notice how much, because there's a lot of change, I'm calling in a massive expansion, how much my mind will laser focus on tiny, tiny details that I want to feel some sense of control over. And to realize in that moment what's happening, sometimes I don't realize it till later, sometimes I'm stressing myself out for no reason, and I'll come back later and be like, why am I feeling so stressed? Okay, let me replay what was going on earlier today. Okay, I I found it. It's usually a version of one of the things I'm going to talk about. I really wanted to be in control of the timing of this. I really wanted to be in control of the outcome. And then I come back to, okay, what can I control? Perfect example is, let's say you're really out to achieve a result in your business and it's not going the way that you thought. And if you think about the things you can control and the things you can't, the only things you can actually control are your mindset, your beliefs, like the thoughts you're having about that goal, and then the actual actions that you take. We actually don't have control over the result itself. We can only control how much effort we're putting into that result. But if you're anything like me, you think, it's almost like you think if we stress enough about it, we actually can control it, which just never ends up working out the way that I thought it should. In fact, it gives me less energy, less creative ideas, and it really limits me. Because the other thing about control that I've really had to, I've really had to work on right now in this season is that when I want to be in control, I am in that moment immediately limiting myself because control can only operate within the realm of what I already know. 
It's what I already know. It's what I've seen. It's what I have evidence for. It doesn't involve the realm of the impossible or of miracles because that's in the unknown. So the moment that I am focusing on trying to be in control of things that I'm actually just not in control of, right? If when I step outside of the tiny circle around me of what Lindsay can control, I am cutting myself off from miracles in that moment. Having control, needing to have control is a lack of trust. It's a lack of trust in, you know, whatever higher power you believe in. It's a lack of trust that there are energies that are far bigger than us at play. And that as a human being, we literally just have such a sliver. We can't even see the whole picture. And when I zoom out and I think about the bigger picture and all the things that I don't know about this thing I'm trying to control, like if I'm trying to control the timing of when something happens and I want it to be my way. I mean, I don't know if anyone else has ever done that, just me. I don't know all the pieces at play. I don't know the right, perfect timing. I think I do. But in the moments when I try to take control over things that I cannot control, I immediately disconnect from miracles. I disconnect from trusting that there is a bigger plan that I cannot see. And that's really helped me in those moments when it's hard. I mean, it's, it's easy to say, just let go, just let go of control. But if control to you is like breathing oxygen, like it is to me, I realize in a lot of ways, I only know how to produce results one way. And it was by being too much in this energy of trying to control things that just aren't mine to control. So learning to undo that energy is taking time. But in the moments that I realize it, I remind myself, okay, I'm disconnecting from miracles right now. Is that what I want? And I don't see the whole picture. I'm just seeing a tiny sliver of my perspective on this. Let me just consider that there's a bigger perspective. And if you believe in a higher power like I do, maybe that higher power knows more than I do. Okay. And then I look for the fear that is underneath the desire for control. It's a lot of time the fear of the unknown, fear of uncertainty. Maybe it's fear of failure. So you're trying to control and prevent failure at all costs. But again, then you're just limiting yourself. You're not actually tapping into the miracles available. Maybe it's just fear of not looking good or fear of being perceived in a certain way. A lot of us, you know, use control to control the way we are perceived by others, which is going to lead us into our next block. So right now, how I'm working with this, because this is very much showing up in my life, like in such a, it is, it is right there smacking me in the face on a daily basis. And to me, again, going back to our conversation last week about the internal expansion, to me, that's a sign that this pattern right now is coming up in such a big way because it's there for me to transform it. And it doesn't mean that now I just have to become this lackadaisical person. I mean, I'm like a Capricorn. I'm an oldest child (laughs) Capricorn, which if you know anything about like astrology signs, like that's, we're the ones that get shit done. Like we will get it done. So telling me just to like completely let go of all control, not, that's not even responsible, right? Again, that was such an oldest child thing of me to say. So it's not about just completely letting go of control. It's coming back to what is mine to control and what is not mine. And I would say a good 75% of what I want to control is not actually mine to control. And then I'm trying to focus more on how I'm operating before what I'm doing, because the energy behind it, I'm still in action. I'm still doing, I'm doing everything that is mine to do. I'm not just sitting back and expecting someone else to take control over my areas, but I'm asking myself, okay, am I coming from a place and an energy of trust? Am I considering that there's a bigger picture that I cannot see? Am I doing all the actions I know to take and then releasing control from there? And that I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know how that goes, but I can tell you the way I feel operating within this season of expansion is much different than when I was trying to control it. The second biggest block and the thing that I'm noticing show up in all different ways is this need for approval. And approval can look a lot of different ways. Maybe for you, it's more validation. Sometimes for me, it does show up as like this validation 
And it's, again, it's so normal if we think about it in the conversation of expansion, because we're leaving what we once knew. We're heading into something we don't have certainty around and it starts to really mess with our internal sense of safety for sure, but our, our identity. If our identity was kind of tied up in this previous version of us, which is hard not to let that happen. I mean, that's not saying that it's bad if, if you realize that that has happened, but I've realized so much of the change going on in every single expansion I've gone through. A lot of the discomfort was I wanted everyone to get it. I wanted everyone to get and say like, yes, of course you should expand out of this version of you into the next one. And a lot of times it was taking a risk on myself and stepping into things that I didn't have any evidence that I was going to be good at. Like when I think back at a big season of, of this energy for me, it was the decision to leave my network marketing business and fully go all in pursuing powerhouse women. I was leaving so much validation. I mean, I think I shared about this in one of the previous episodes, like got awards and put on the cover of like their magazines and, you know, all these things, all the, all these external validations that could have been so easy to continue to try to get my ego fed by those things. When everything in me was saying, take a risk, step out and do this thing. There's so much more for you here. If you're willing to go back to being a beginner and completely voiding yourself of any approval, validation. I mean, I even thought a lot of, I was like, oh, I'm, I want to impact entrepreneurs. I'm sure some of these people will want to follow me, you know, kind of just like follow along on the journey, maybe attend my events. And really no one did. It was such a shock to my system. And, and I'm finding in this season too, I'm in those moments where I am spending a little bit more time, you know, processing alone. I'm noticing how, especially I took a big step back this summer from social media, mostly because I'm, I'm really like reorganizing so much of like how I want to show up. And I was saying to our six figure school group today, I almost felt like part of this expansion for me. And maybe you felt like this before too. I have to disconnect from so many of the things that are tied to that old identity, meaning I just have to kind of remove my energy from getting validation in the same places I used to get it and not rely on it anymore and learn in this season to self-source that feeling of wholeness and worthiness, which is really what, you know, if I look at where I'm needing approval or needing someone else to validate me, it's because I'm hoping it'll fill a, a little sense of lack within myself. And I've just really taken that on as, again, it's been a trigger in this season to notice how uncomfortable I feel when I pull that all back and I just sit with myself and how I feel about myself and the places where like deep, deep down, you know, I thought I'd worked through all of this, so much of this worthiness conversation. And then I find new layers where Oh, I was actually getting a lot of validation from, you know, showing up on social media this way or you know, whatever it was. I was getting a lot from that. And when I stepped back from it, I realized I felt this void and that void sitting in it for an uncomfortable amount of time is teaching me so much about where there's that space for internal expansion. And so, you know, whether for you, this need for approval or need for validation shows up in, I I'll just keep giving examples that are like showing up for me. It's like, I've noticed how I feel like I'm a pretty authentic person, meaning what you see here and what you hear is me. It's authentically me. And there are relationships in my life. There are places in my life, maybe even the podcast. I'll have to explore this to see in what ways this shows up here where I don't yet feel safe showing all of me. A perfect example of this. I remember, you know, like in certain friendships where, you know, maybe people knew me as someone who, you know, had these specific religious beliefs or faith. And really, if I'm being honest, my faith journey has expanded so far beyond, you know, my upbringing and, and just what I used to really resonate with. And it's, 
it's very deep and it's very personal. And that feels really vulnerable to share to certain people who knew me in that way and want me to keep showing up in a certain way. You know, I don't show or maybe talk about all my woo woo spiritual, you know, beliefs that I don't think that they'll get because I just want to be accepted. I want to be liked. That even feels like kind of vulnerable to say on the podcast, I guess, but I'm just coming out of the woo closet. Okay. This is, this is like a big part of my journey is just deepening my spiritual beliefs. And it's so far beyond who I was and how I related to that spirituality and faith in other seasons. And so I just notice I'm noticing these nuances where I expend so much energy running everything through the filter of, is it okay to be fully me? Like, I just want you to think about that in what areas of your life with whom in your life are you actually spending a lot of energy kind of filtering like, oh, let me hold this part back. Or, you know, I don't really agree with them on that, but I just won't say it. No, I'm not saying we have to like be combative or, you know, that there aren't certain people who get all of us and then others who maybe don't get to know everything about you. But for me, again, where this is showing up, where there's room for internal expansion is what's that next layer that I can just allow myself to be fully me. And then the second part is love people and understand if they choose to no longer be on the journey or maybe you know, this podcast no longer resonates or social media content no longer resonates, you know, whatever that is. I don't know even what I'm so afraid of, but what I know is that I'm rewiring patterns that have been a part of me for my entire life that had me believe that in order to be loved, I couldn't really be all of me. And maybe that resonates for some of you. Again, I think this is something that's to be explored in layers. And I think I'm always going to be finding new ways of exploring my own authenticity and leaving space for other people to explore theirs. Cause I want other people to feel free to be everything that they are as well. And just noticing where in the past, if someone were to mirror back to me, maybe let's just say lack of approval, right? Or someone's who's just like, I don't like you. You're like this. That anytime I'm really triggered by that, again, back to like the triggers being our biggest teachers, it's really just showing me where I have room for expansion. I have room for change. If someone is now, I don't take everyone's feedback and internalize it, but, but if it triggers me, that usually means that deep, deep down, there's a part of it that I resonate with as truth. And that is the part for me to explore. So it's just an invitation for you to also be in this internal expansion, this, I guess it's just this exploration of where are these triggers showing up for you and if they are. And then the third one, and and like I said, this is kind of tied to the need for approval, but it's, it's very specific. And this came up on a call, this conversation with our six figure school group today. So I wanted to speak to it. And it's this idea of if we think about what's blocking our expansion, like what's blocking you from going to the next level, it's just this simple tendency that I have definitely gone through. I see other women go through and it's this desire or this effort to take everyone along with you into the next season. And again, I don't know exactly who I'm sharing this for. Sometimes these, you know, these thoughts or these downloads kind of just come. And I just know it's for at least one person who's listening to this, who really needed to hear this part of the conversation. But if you are someone who has that big desire, like we talked about in the last episode, if you are here on this planet and you know, there's a lot for you to experience, it means that you are someone who is signing up in this lifetime for a journey of constant evolution. And that doesn't mean that everyone around you is on that same journey. And whether that means, you know, your clients, the people who are like the perfect dream clients for you in one season may not be in the next season, you know, for sure friendships. I feel like this shows up a lot within, okay, how do we support ourselves, especially if we're growing really fast and maybe we're not growing at the same speed as other people around us. The belief, the false belief that we can or should want to take everyone along with us 
holds people back it held me back in such deep, deep ways. And I think it's partially, again, if we, any of these, if we look underneath them, there's a fear. I am someone who's wired for connection. I, it's why I build community. It's why I love showing up here. And even though I can't see your faces, I love, I feel a connection with you. And anytime I feel that there's the risk of losing connection, it feels like a death. And a lot of my deepest grief through my different transitions, you know, through my different evolutions has been grieving those relationship evolutions. And, and I think if you also experience that number one, it points to the fact that that's probably also one of your biggest strengths. Like you love people deeply, you connect deeply, and it also makes it a little bit harder for us to evolve as we need to in those times when it's just time for you to evolve and for those relationships to shift, right? So thinking that we can take everyone with us or that we should want to kind of ties into all three, right? It's trying to control someone else's process. And yes, like needing their, it's almost like needing their validation or wanting their validation and wanting them to go along with us so that we feel safe. But it kind of brings me back to this idea of in those seasons where you realize you're kind of in this in between where, you know, some relationships have shifted or the new up-leveled relationships haven't shown up in your life. I think it can teach you so much about where you are holding yourself back by thinking that you could take everyone along with you. And what I said on the call earlier today with our six figure school group is it was a reminder that I needed and maybe someone listening here needs it too. It's just that for every one person who doesn't get it, they don't get, they're so hurt. They may even be really vocal with you that they don't understand, you know, why you're, you're evolving and maybe like they're not important to you anymore. And they're saying these things and they really just don't get it. They misunderstand really the dynamic that's happening, that you are just following your soul's path. Like you are meant to evolve. And for every one person who does not get it, there are 10, 20, a hundred others who need to see you evolve. And especially when it comes to evolving and outgrowing some of like the people you've worked with, some clients you've served. I say this all the time. If you are a leader, you have to evolve. Your people actually need to see you evolve. Usually the only clients who don't want you to evolve are the ones who don't want to evolve themselves. And your evolution puts up a mirror and shows, and this can be true of other people in our lives too, but it, it, it just shines a light on maybe where they're not ready to evolve yet. And that's their timing and their journey. And who's to say which one is better or, or worse or more, you know, we know which one is more celebrated, but at the same time, it's like, there's no one journey that is a one size fits all. And the hardest part, especially having this tendency to care way too much about like, again, the control thing, just care way too much about other people's journey. I want to take everyone with me. I realized that I was using that as a way to keep myself small. And if I looked underneath that, the fear was of my own power. Because it felt easier to just say like, oh, I'm just kind of, you know, making sure everyone, everyone feels included. And, but that was just a way to hide. So someone listening needed to hear that today. And maybe that someone was me. Maybe I'm just giving you my own therapy session and vicariously you'll take something away from this too. But, you know, as we kind of wrap up this conversation we've been having about expansion and just what is oh, these, these layers, it's messy. It's beautiful. It'll show you things that I believe me, you will not want to look at, but when you do, when you're willing to look at them and lovingly welcome them in and realize that every, every one of these patterns that we could say is blocking us was created at another time in our life, maybe even like early, early life to serve a purpose. And I think what's been helpful for me is to honor it instead of just reject it. Like, oh, this need for control or this need for approval or this people pleasing has to go to welcome it in. It's almost like I am invited into this. If you can, if you're watching on video, I'm sitting on a very comfy couch and I just invite it to pull up a seat. And I'm like, gosh, I just see all the ways you were trying to keep me safe. Thank you. 
Like, thank you. You made me really successful. That worked for a long time. And I'm ready to evolve into the next phase. And I know that I probably won't ever get rid of these patterns. I think they'll always be a part of me and something that I'm working with this, you know, these things that I've worked to overcome, they'll still be a part of my story, but every evolution, they become less and less in the driver's seat and the real me, the most authentic me, the one who's, you know, coming out of the spiritual woo-woo closet is in the driver's seat. And what I can say is that that energy of just feeling the most aligned with my authentic self and give myself permission to change what that means on a day-to-day basis feels like the most freedom I've maybe ever experienced. And I want that for you too. So if you're on this expansion journey with me, if you are really feeling called out by whether it's your need for control, your need for approval, validation, if you're, you've been trying to like load up a van and take everyone with you on your expansion. Just know you're not alone, but also it's time to look a little bit deeper underneath that. What's the real fear and why are you using that to keep yourself small? Because it's time to expand. You're ready.